Welcome to Reptilian Diaries. I'm Frank. We do reptiles here. This episode, a closer look, the genus Strophurus. What is a Strophurus? Strophurus is a genus of arboreal gecko coming from Australia. They encompass the entire continent of Australia for the most part. From the west coast to the east coast, the whole thing, top to bottom. There's quite a few species, 20 plus, and they're badass. They range from little tiny, they call them phasmid, spinifex dwelling geckos, all the way up to, you know, good size. Closing in on six inch Strophorus ciliaris up in the north, living in the larger trees. We're going to cover quite a few of them today. I've seen a handful of them in the wild. I keep a handful of them in captivity. Let's do it. So the genus Strophorus, it's a pretty big genus, 20, 21 species, something like that. They range all over Australia. You can find them in Western Australia. You can find them in Queensland. You can find them in Southern Aust- or South Australia. You can find them up in Northern Territory. Um, you can find them in Victoria. You can find them all over the place. Really neat geckos, variable, and they, uh, they what? What do they do? They inhabit a variety of niches, whether it be tropical savanna, Queensland area, actual desert, like central, red center, Western Australia, and even temperate areas kind of down in the southeast. Okay, so Strophorus, basically two different groups. You've got your typical Strophorus, Strophorus ciliaris, Strophorus tanicata, Strophorus strophorus, uh, Strophorus intermedius, Strophorus spinigerus. These kind of species generally live in branches, in shrubs, bushes, and trees. Then you've got your phasmids. You've got Strophorus elderi, Strophorus geniae, Strophorus taniatus, Strophorus michelsonae, Strophorus horneri, etc. These guys are living specifically in spinifex. If you don't know what spinifex is, it's like this small grass crossed with cactus that grows all over Australia. Shit is nasty. But it's these long, thick spines. The geckos crawl around in it. Creates a perfect environment for them. These are insectivores. They're eating insects. They're mostly arboreal. You can find them on the ground. I've found them crossing the roads, and I've found them on the ground under bushes. Generally, they are in bushes or trees. They're adapted to live like this. They blend in with that bark. They hold the bark very very elegantly <laughs> and they'll they'll kind of dip from one side to the other if you're trying to see them so they're very camouflaged like that they don't hide like straight go underneath rocks they they're in the branches cool thing about these guys is they squirt nasty smelling shit out of their tails it's a defense mechanism so if a snake or a bird or a rodent or another reptile was to grab them they'd shoot this stuff out of their tails it's like, it's like sticky glue and it stinks. It's not, I've heard people say, oh my God, it smells so bad. It doesn't smell that bad. It really doesn't. I've smelled it. Like, it's crazy. You keep these things in captivity. They, they rarely spray. The ones in the wild, every single time they blast me and it doesn't smell that bad, but it is sticky. And I'm sure if you get it in your mouth, it sucks. So now in captivity, these geckos are very easy to keep. There's probably six or seven species being in ke- being kept in captivity right now. Um, I keep three. Yeah, yeah, I keep three species. I keep Strophorus intermedius. I keep Strophorus spinigerus, and I keep Strophorus williamsi. Um, there's more species being kept in captivity. A lot of guys are keeping ciliaris. Uh, there's a lot of guys keeping tanicata. There's a few people keeping elderi. There's people keeping wellingtone. Uh, and a couple others. They're great, great geckos to keep. They're not difficult. Um, let's hop into the garage. 
the gecko room and uh, see how I keep them. So this is how I keep the strophorus. Eight inches by eight inches by 12 inches high. One of these cages is good for a pair or you can keep single males, couple females, whatever. It's good for two to three animals, something like that. Got a rock wall, made of grout, some sand, color, rocks, stuff like that thrown in. I lay them on their back, put the grout down, let it dry, flip it up, it's good. It's lightweight, good to go. Branches, vertically, sideways, horizontal, that's what you need. You don't need hides. Strophers aren't gonna use hides. They hide by holding onto the branch and going to the other side. So these cups here, this is just like a, uh, I don't know, cream cheese or sour cream or whatever, cut a hole in the top. I put some damp sand mixed with peat moss in there, squeeze all the water out so nothing will come out of your hand when you squeeze it, pop it in, females will lay their eggs there. Up top, we've got a puck light. It's a 25 watt halogen bulb. It's used for basking. I do a little trick, I break the glass out of them and these, uh, these bulbs actually do produce a little bit of UVB if that glass is gone. Just enough for strophorus. The bottom has a heat pad, keep it warm. So generally the cage, the thermal gradient in these cages is kind of from the top to the bottom, but the bottom also has a warm spot. The top is up in the 90s, mid-level is 80s, bottom on the cool side is 70, bottom on the warm side is back up to the 90s. So they can kind of go up and down that thermal gradient. So the animals I'm keeping in these cages are Strophorus spinigerus, Strophorus williamsi, and Strophorus intermedius. So let's check them out. So, this is Strophorus Williamsy. Little male chilling. There's his female. Really cool animals. Beautiful eyes. So, this is how these guys will stay in the daytime. They will just chill on these branches. Don't need any sort of extravagant hides or anything like that. Sometimes they'll bask. I spray these guys down twice a week. I don't soak them, I just spray them. They lick water off of the wood and off of the sides of the terrarium. I don't use a water dish. And uh, the feeding is simple. It's small red runner roaches, which is Blatto lateralis. It's small dubia roaches. I don't use crickets anymore. I used to swear on crickets, but I hate crickets, so I don't use them. They stink and they're nasty and they die and it's a waste of money. Roaches, mealworms, waxworms on occasion, stuff like that. That's what I'm about. So this is Strophorus intermedius. She's a chunky girl. These guys, when they're out and they're active and they're hunting, they have red eyes, really cool. These guys don't have really spiny tails. You can see the remnants of spines or the beginning of spines I guess but these guys don't have a lot of spines like a lot of the other species do. They are beautiful because they have this really neat reticulated black pattern on their backs. Yep, Strophorus intermedius. All right, let's check out Strophorus spinigerus. So I have found these guys in the wild. Look at those yellow eyes. These guys are from Western Australia. And these guys are often found living right in people's yards in Perth, which is super cool. And they've got this just cool ass with yellow eyes. Don't you jump. And this is a male. Let's see if I can show you the black going down the back on these guys. It's pretty neat. So they've got this kind of black striping, not really a stripe, it's more of a kind of a zigzaggy line down their back. Some populations have a more prominent one than others, but fucking cool. And those yellow eyes are just epic. striping on her, but she's rad. Super cool animal. Love these guys. <sighs> so that is how I keep the adult strophorus. The babies, I keep them in deli cups. Check it. Super easy way to keep babies, just like that. They've got 
venting in the top inside of these is a little baby strophorus, a single stick, and some substrate. The reason why you want to keep them like this is because they can be a little bit finicky when it comes to eating. And uh, I feel like this keeps the food right within their eyesight. And so it's always there for them. So when they do have that little inkling to eat, there's food ready for them. And so that is how I've always kept my baby strophorus until they get a couple of months old. Once they get a little bit older, then I move them into something else. But this is generally how I do it. And there you can see that's a little baby strophorus spinach, or uh, that's a strophorus intermedius in there. And uh, yeah, it's very simple, but it works. And that's my deal. If it's simple and it works, I'm all about it. Let's check this little guy out. And there is a little baby intermedius. This is who, this is the size of the geckos that I keep in these little deli cups. Feed them small roaches and uh, they do well. That's how I keep strophorus. Thank you. So the eggs, the eggs are easy to incubate. Take some perlite, put it on a scale, weigh it out. Take some water, put it on a scale, match those two weights, mix them together. Kind of squeeze out any excess water if there is any. Put them in a deli cup that does not have holes in it. These eggs don't need to breathe. Put the eggs, don't bury them, just kind of place them. You can kind of scoot them in a little bit so they sit down in it. Put the lid on it. Maybe every week, pop it open, have a look, keep it closed. That's how you do it. 83 degrees, 60 to 80 days, and you will hatch them. They're tiny, but they're not that difficult to raise. If you give them a little bit of UVB light and keep them how I showed you in these deli cups, the food items are right there. There's not too much confusion going on. There's one or two sticks. Keep them in the 80s. Do this. You will succeed with them. That's how we do it. So that has been Strophurus. Let's show some clips from the wild of the Strophurus I've caught because that's my favorite thing to do. So let's check that out and then let's wrap it.
That's a big Wellington, eh? <laughs> Too much yeah, light? Yeah, that's dope, man. That's perfect. It's all pissy. That's a big old stroke for us Wellington, eh? He is not a happy camper. That's an adult right there, Greg. Big boy, huh? Look at those red... Big girl, red, I think. Oh, yeah, big girl. Can you see the tail? Those red spikes on the tail. That's fucking cool. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Closer look, covered a whole genus this time. Just quickly, we're not diving all crazy into it, just running through it. Stroferous, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more.